This is one of the most important topics, I think, you know, after understanding our basic beliefs, because this is the big challenge that the Muslims face in this country. Uh, next slide. So the way cultures are protected, you know, is two, there are two mechanisms that protects cultures. And when they, they are not in place, then those two cultures get destroyed. One of the ways in which cultures get wiped out is literally like a plague or a pandemic physically get wiped out, like a, a natural disaster destroys all the people. Uh, and so sometimes Allah, like in the old days, Ad and Samud and so many other people have been wiped out physically, all their culture went with them. That's one way in which a culture gets disappeared from the face of the earth. The other way is when parents don't teach their children their culture to protect it and to follow it and to be able to find a way to continue that culture. And so when that breaks down where the parents is unable to get their children to follow the same culture of the parents, then that culture will be destroyed. And so the parents plays an incredible big role in terms of protecting the cultural norms of whatever they believe in. And Islam is here what we're talking about. So Islam gets protected. The practice of Islam, its cultural norms, the lifestyle only works if the parents are able to successfully transfer that to the next generation. And so we have this huge challenge that parents have. Uh, and then the way it was being done by most cultures is that you are learning on the job. No one goes to a parenting class when they get married. They learn from mom and dad. Mom and dad hands down and tells them, this is what you do. When they have a little difficulty, they call mom and dad. How do you do this to the baby? What do we do here? The baby is sick. Here, take this kind of medication. And so we tend to learn from our parents how to parent. But then you have now a situation where we have moved to a new land. And so we've uprooted our parents, uprooted themselves and come to a new place and trying to raise children in a new society. And so all of that benefit that would come of learning from your parents on the job now becomes irrelevant in some ways because it doesn't apply to this new society. Coupled with that, the society has moved farther from one generation to the next because of technology, that it is almost a different world that we are raising our children now with no guidelines because we cannot use the templates of our parents in order to raise our child, children. So we are in a very, very difficult and crisis mode in terms of trying to figure out how do I raise my children to be good Muslims in this society without the benefit of my parents trying to help me because they have been born and socialized in this society. And so that's the challenge. So let's begin at the top. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. Uh, first of all, when Allah talks about us, he says, Ku ya ilazina amanu, ku anfusakum ahlikum nara, wa kudahan nasa wal hijara. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, save yourselves and your family and your families from the fire whose fuel will be men and stones. So when Allah talks about us and our families, he is saying your priority is not for them to get this education or this job or this particular role. He said, your job is to raise your children and your families in such a way that they will merit the paradise and be saved from the hellfire. And so Allah puts it on the line that the, all the priority in terms of what you need to do as a family is how do I protect my Islam and save my family from the fire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, And I want, he says, and I want you to know that your wealth and your children are going to be some of the greatest trials that you will have, that they are a great trial for you. So Allah is telling us up front that wealth and children are not easy. It's going to be a tremendous fitna for you to be able to do that. And then he tells us what we need to reach, place where we need to reach. And he says, 
والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما and he says and the believers are those who they make dua to Allah and says oh Allah grant us from our wives and our offsprings the comfort of our eyes the coolness of our eyes and make us an example of the righteous you know in the desert when your eyes you have an opportunity to have your eyes be cool in the heat and the sand and the wind it is an amazing thing and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying your children should become such that when you look at them your eyes feel cool and calm and serene because of how you have raised them and so the big challenge is for us to be able to raise our children to become good muslims healthy believers strong believers who can make a difference in the world now when you get your child even before you get your child before the child is born parents as the as they see the mom getting pregnant and get her, her her stomach is getting bigger and bigger parents they have a vision of what they want their children to be and they will tell you and boast about it my child is going to be a doctor my child is going to be the greatest genius my child is going to be an engineer and so parents sometimes they have this dream for their children to be this incredibly special and uh person and they lock into that dream so much that from the moment the child is born they're trying to force that child in that direction and even though the child may resist they are very very strong in deciding that this is what i want my child to do instead of doing the other thing which is relax on the dream let your child grow and let them find what gift every child brings gifts to this world that is special to them let them discover their special gifts and help them to move in that direction it may not be the dream that you want for your children you know when i had the good fortune of raising four children and i tell you they all went into directions which i never anticipated you know my big son for example he used to recite poetry in churches and synagogues you know for non muslim audiences they they went into different different fields of study that was incredibly diff- difficult for me to forecast and so those parents who have this dream it's fine to have your dream but be flexible don't just lock into such an extent that you can't change now when your child is born islam has prescribed a certain set of things that we need to immediately do it's known as the aqiqa the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he came he met the people having a version of this and so islam adopted the goodness of it and so aqiqa means that whenever your child is born there's a certain amount of things you have to number one you have to give the azan uh into the right ear of the child uh, put something sweet in the mouth of the child circumcise the child if it's a boy make sure that the child get a good name uh kill one sheep or two if it's a boy it's two if it's a girl is one uh shave or cut the hair and its weight in silver or gold is distributed in charity and so from the very beginning the birth of this child brings not only titles to people somebody become an uncle somebody become a grandfather for the first time somebody become a mother or a father the child comes bringing titles to people the child comes where someone will benefit from the sadaqa as a result of the birth of the child the child gets its first words as the word of allah in his ear the child tastes something sweet and so the child gets the blessings of the aqiqa when you do the aqiqa for your children uh, we're told that the, the shaitan you get extra protection from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan so the shaitan will not interfere with them and secondly the child gets permission to make intercession for their parents on the day of judgment when we need every help we can get that child now will be able to be one of those who will seek intercession for his parents so the aqiqa is very important it is a sunnah strong sunnah it's not fard but it's really recommended that you have children try your best to do it either on the 7th day or or the 14th day or the 24th day or any time after uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a child is ransom against the aqiqa so it's like certain things if you don't do the aqiqa then it it's certain things are held back for that child may allah help us all to do aqiqa for our children